Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, or good night, depending on where you're tuning in from. As usual, it is so good to see all of your beautiful smiling faces today. Looking forward to um, to our little chat. You may have noticed we've relabeled this live session. I forget what it's called now, actually. I thought of it this morning. I was using AI to help generate new titles for the live stream. So instead of Saturday Morning Marketing Live, it's something... I don't know, modern marketing, mastery, Q&A, something, something. So with that said, I'm looking forward to chatting. I'm, uh, I'm expecting good questions. Last week were amazing. Week before, also good. Uh, a lot of things going on with the economy, with inflation, with business growth, with failures, with technology, with um, just a whole plethora, magnitude of, uh, of different topics and subjects to go into. So I say we dive in. Maddie GB85. Finally, I'm getting to watch one of this man's live streams pumped. Oh, Maddie, not as pumped as I am to see you here, my friend. Dante B, hopefully I get questions answered. Well, depends on the question and uh, depends on if we have time. It looks good though, my man. You're uh, you're here early. So ask away and uh, I'm, I bet you we'll get to it. Nick Trigilio? Trigilio? Is that a silent G? A solid G? Um, SML is in my routine now, Saturday morning live or Saturday marketing live. I don't even know what we're calling these things, but I'm so glad that you're here, Nick. So good. Started my agency recently. Is it better to take any work I can or focus on a niche? I've experienced in a few niches, but afraid of limiting myself as I'm getting started. Oh, this is a, such a good question. We're coming back to this one. Hang on. I'm going to, I'm going to say hi a few more times, a few more people. And then we're coming back to yours, Nick. Cause it's, um, that's a doozy. And I think it's going to help a lot of people. Lando. Good morning, everyone. And Adam, don't forget to hit the like button. Oh, you know it. we got 43 people. We have seven likes. Not a good ratio. Let's, uh, let's boost it up. King, 20 minutes left for the live. Uh, I assume that means for you. And then you've got to probably bail somewhere. So if you got a question, drop it in. We should be able to get to it. Kevin, I tell you, man, you've, I think you're like, you're holding the record here for the longest, um, most lives attended and longest streak. Amazing. Just amazing. Mel, good morning. Happy Saturday. Excited for another great live session. Not as excited as I am, Mel. So good to see you here. All right, Ruben. Hello, everyone. Ready to learn from all of you, especially from Adam. So cool. Yes, exactly. I'm, I'm just one of the pieces of this puzzle. Um, the community here is going to be able to hopefully weigh in and provide other insights and, um, and additional, what would you call that? Perspectives on, uh, on questions. All right. Millionaire millennial, Nick, I would stick with a niche. It's easier to build your name in a single domain. All right. I think we're in it. I think we're in it. Let's just dive in. So Nick, or pardon me, mil <laughs> that's a tongue twister, millionaire millennial. You're not wrong. You're not wrong, but there's another perspective. So let me scroll back up uh, because I'm going to tell you what you should probably do. And then I'm going to tell you what I did that worked out just fine. So what our friend millionaire, millennial, we got to, I got to learn your real name there. Uh, what he's saying is not wrong. Like absolutely. It is easier to establish yourself as an expert in a single niche. That said, it is slower and it is harder to sort of, um, to get traction and get going because until you've built up a number of case studies and testimonials and referrals in that niche, like why you, why would I trust you anyway over someone else? So what I did is I just took all of the work that I could which is my suggestion. So when you're first getting started, do everything you can for all of the people. That said, you don't have to publish it. You don't have to broadcast it. You don't have to announce that you're a jack of all trades. You can still focus and niche while at the same time feeding yourself and your family and your friends, whatever you else you have to do by taking on other work. So you could almost consider other niches like a bit of a side hustle. So if you're first starting an agency, Maybe you're still keeping a job. Maybe you're washing cars. Maybe you're mowing lawns, whatever it is. Like all that's fine. You don't need to advertise the fact that you also mow lawns and wash cars. So that is my advice. Um, niche down, yes, but also take all the work you can in the beginning. For for no other reason than also it's going to give you different perspectives and um, an experience that you're just not going to get when you niche right away. Okay, Jadwin Webble, good morning. Good morning, Jadwin. I'm planning to launch an agency that will offer AI solutions, custom chatbots, software, etc., along with website creation and software engineering. Any tips for marketing it? The best tip that I can give you is figure out what your point of differentiation and uniqueness is. And the reason um, 
is because there are already AI powered chatbots and software. There's already AI powered website creation, blah, blah, blah. Like all of these things already exist. So what is it about you and your service that's going to make it different slash better? That's going to be the thing to really focus on. It can also change over time. So what you start with may very well be, will likely not at all be what you end with. So pick something. Maybe it is the fact you said custom. Let's stick with that. So we offer custom, personalized, highly specific, da da da, using automation. So we do the work, robots do the work, you do none of the work. Something like that. Timothy McManus, hello, Timothy. Glad you could make it here. Maddie, been a very exciting few weeks. Yeah, you know it. Um, you talking me or you? All of us? Life? Yeah, it's been nuts, man. What's going on in the world? What is happening? I think it's all good. Very exciting stuff. But Letty Stores, morning master of masters. You are the best. Oh, Letty, you're too kind. You're the best. I feel like we're just a big happy family here. Kirk, good morning. Hey, morning, Kirk. Happy Saturday to you and to you as well, my friend. It's um, it's a weird Saturday for me. I, I don't think I told anybody. I went out of town this last few days. I just got back into town yesterday, day before. I don't even know. It's been a blur. Uh, I went to Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, which is just north of North Dakota, uh, which is also where I grew up uh, a large part. I grew up largely here where I am now in uh, in the West Coast of um, the world, uh, but I also grew up in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Went back there, um, retraced all my old steps, went and saw the first job that I ever got back when I was 14 years old. My boss was actually still there, had a chat with him. It was amazing. It was absolutely incredible. So very neat experience to go see. Uh, Esteban Nina, hello, Esteban. And Doria, what do you think about majoring in management information systems? I like tough question, totally personal. Up to you, man, uh, man or woman or person, Andoria. I don't know which, which, where are you, where are you going to identify with, with that name, but, um, it's totally up to you. Like, I don't know about what your interests are, what your desires are, what your goals are, whatever you want to do. It's kind of like, Hey, what do you think about majoring in finance? I'd be like, well, do you like finance? Do you see a uh, future in finance? Is that something that you want to do? So fine. Uh, I think the bigger question is what are your ultimate end goals and outcomes that you want to achieve? Because majoring in anything is as useful as what you're going to do with it after. That makes sense. That made sense. We can talk about that for later. Uh, Martini, how do I market to moms for kids clothing? I'm struggling. Okay. You go to where moms are. So moms are on uh, Facebook. They're on Instagram. They're on Pinterest. Uh, you find what makes your kids clothing interesting. Is it more durable? Is it sustainably sourced? Is it cheaper? Is it more expensive? Is it night bright colors? Will it last through hand-me-downs like there's got to be something about it that's not just kids clothes because kids clothes can get anywhere and get everywhere they're everywhere so you've got to find that point of differentiation and then you've got to talk to your market about like moms what do you guys want what do you what do you look for when you're looking for kids clothes i'm going to try and keep my hands off the desk because i keep getting all excited and shaking the camera and everything um so it's like for me as a um as a not mom but a dad like, what do I look for in kids' clothes? Oh, my wife buys most of the kids' clothes, embarrassingly. I don't buy very many at all, slash none. Um, but I know what we look for is like the jeans should hopefully last at least a kid because with four kids, ideally it's nice to like give a hand-me-down or two and they trash them. Um, comfortable, well-fitting, cost-effective enough because I don't know what it is about like putting kids in a new t-shirt, but it's like they're getting a, a popsicle stain on that thing in like a minute or a grass stain or whatever it is. Hacker boy. Hey, Gene. Hey, Adam. Greetings from the Philippines. Hey, Gene. Good to see you here all the way from the Philippines. So far away. Amazing. Glad you could tune in. Devang, supercar. I asked this question on various platforms and in various types. Please don't take it otherwise. But why is your views to subscribers ratio so low and how do you plan to make it high? Okay. Great question. And I won't take it the wrong way. Fair question. Why are views to subscriber ratios low for most videos? It's simply because two things. Number one, your subscriber numbers, at least on platforms like actually all of them, really, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, it's less relevant today. It used to be that subscribers were the first ones to see your stuff. Now it's people that engage with your stuff that see it the most. So the longer a channel or platforms around, the more subscribers you're going to have. But a lot of people, especially in, say, marketing and business, they start marketing and they start business and they're super excited and they subscribe and they watch all the videos. Then they move on. They get a job, they quit, they do whatever, uh, but they don't unsubscribe. 
so they stay. So the numbers look nice and high, but the views start to go down a little bit. So that's one factor. Uh, the second thing is, is that it is the 80-20 principle. So some videos are going to get hundreds of thousands of views and some video are going to get like a couple thousand. And that's just the way that it goes. So, um, yeah, not a, there's no real logic or, um, there, there's nothing that you want to take away and be like, whoa, this video didn't work or this video did work because they have different goals and objectives. But yeah, that's just how it goes. And I think you got to be comfortable with that, which I certainly am. Mohammed. Hello, Adam. Hello, Mohammed. Mr. Zozoki, glad to be here. I'm glad to have you here. What up from 412? I don't know what the 412 is. What's the 412? What's that area code? Hang on. 412, area code. Da 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 da. It is Pittsburgh. Hello from Pittsburgh. Uh, Katarina Mitzi, hello from London. Hello, Katarina. Ada, hello. And Marit, hey, my friend, glad you could make it back. We would like to start a social media for clients and grow it using shorts. They all don't want to go in front of the camera though. Would something like blogging be better to grow? This is a great question. So when it comes to content marketing, you have all these options. Some are better than others, but we also have to be realistic. So if I had my perfect way for most people, what would I suggest? I would suggest producing Netflix quality documentary videos, half hour long, Johnny Harris style, the man's a genius, beautiful videos. Uh, if you haven't watched his YouTube stuff, it'll blow your mind. It's like literally a mini documentary in each video. That's what I would suggest, but that's not practical or reasonable. So we have to start moving down the spectrum. So maybe a simple YouTube video, not that, maybe a short, not that, maybe a carousel post, not that, maybe a tweet, not that, maybe whatever else. So you work with what you've got, knowing full well the video is always, at least now, right now, 2023, going to deliver you the highest ROI for most people most of the time. Does blogging still work? Sure. Is it harder? Yeah, probably. Um, I'd go podcast and blog. Like if I was going to go that route, uh, because you definitely want that longer form relationship and uh, content that you're not going to get with a blog. People still read though. I still read. I read blogs. So yeah, you could do that. See if they will entertain a podcast. All right, answered that one. Gabriel, good morning from Venezuela. Pardon me, Venezuela. Buenos dias, Gabriel. Que tal, mi amigo? Mel, can you walk us through a typical sales funnel you would use for a service-based business? Absolutely. Simple, simple, simple. In fact, I have something called the case funnel. Um, if you Google, actually, you might have to YouTube search. YouTube search case funnel Adam Earhart. I talk about this in a couple different videos, but it's for coaches, consultants. There's the C agencies, there's the A, S is services, and E is experts. Um, and it's almost always the same. And basically, we start with some kind of piece of content that either provides value through a blog, a video, a podcast, whatever. Uh, or it could be a paid ad that's like, hey, we have this thing, go get it. Then we move them to a lead magnet. So we're offering them some kind of something valuable in exchange for their name and email, et cetera. So for me, I have this little guy here, freemarketingcheatsheet.com. It is a short, simple, one-page marketing cheat sheet. So someone clicks, I don't know, watch a live like this. They go there, they click this. Now my funnel is going to change now after this because I'm not looking for clients. But however, if I was, the, um, the beginning part of the process would remain the same. They download the lead magnet. They get added to an email follow-up sequence. Here's your lead magnet. Here's some value. Here's some things that I think will help you. Here's some other tips. Here's some resources. Here's this. Here's that. Here's the other. Then we send them, hey, by the way, would you like more personal attention? Would you like this other thing? Would you like whatever it is? I send them to an application form. We use an application form for a number of reasons. I'm happy to go into it in detail later. Uh, it's a whole topic unto itself, but basically it frames things correctly. So you are the expert and they are applying to you, but it also allows you to um, collect relevant, valuable information that you're going to use to create your diagnostic. And then once that's done, then you have a call with them, then you close them into a client. That's it. Sales funnel. Um, and I use this to automate the process always. So any service-based business, it is my strong opinion that you should use this software or something similar-ish. I'm sure there's others out there that are fine. This is just my personal preference and the one that I use with everything that I do. Okay. Mohammed, any reason why I have more view when I post a story every 24 hours than every two hours? Yeah. Algorithm, um, data, 
I'm sure there's a fancy word for this, but it's like if you basically put out tons and tons and tons of stuff, it overwhelms people. And they're like, I can't watch all of that. It's the reason that we don't actually, there's a number of reasons why we don't do like a video a day on the channel is it's just too much. People can't watch all of it. And so we put in tons more work and we don't help as many people. That doesn't make a lot of sense. So yeah, play around, find the right frequency for you. Robert Merrick, good morning from Pensacola. Morning, Robert. What time is it there? 9, 10, 11, 11, 15. Amazing. David, been watching your videos. They are great. Thank you, David. I'm glad you're enjoying. I'm new to Shopify and have not launched yet. I need help to set up my strategy and the marketing. Who do you recommend? Oh, I don't have anyone that I recommend to like go do it for you um, because I don't do tons of Shopify stuff other than consulting. So... You're going to have to probably watch a lot of YouTube videos on Shopify and see if any of the people that are making the videos do consulting or offer services like that. You can look in their descriptions. But yeah, there's no one that I know personally that I can pass on. Alexandra, so happy I made it live this time. Thank you for keep showing up for us. Adam, hey, Alexandra, my pleasure. Glad you could be here live. Okay. Moritz, okay, follow up. Starting an agency, how can I explain clients the way shorts work and get them in front of the camera? So how do you get clients in front of the camera if they just don't want to do it? Number one is you can't force them because um, that would be awkward, but you can show them how to make it easy. Uh, the second thing you can do is you can script everything out and have them just take it line by line and clean the rest of it up in editing. That's probably the best plan. So you can you can write a script. You can give it to them. You can be like, is this about right? Okay, read this line, read this line, read this line, read this line. They can either read it face to camera or possibly looking off camera and then just read it and then you can edit. It's going to be better face to camera with shorts, but yep, that is the, um, that's the struggle, Maritz. That's the struggle. Kirk, I'm stuck, Adam. So glad you're here. I'm glad you're here too. Let's get you unstuck. Which business model might you recommend if someone wants to generate even the smallest income right away so that income can be allocated to a bigger plan? Oh, awesome. Okay. The fastest way to generate income, even a hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, whatever it is, is through some kind of DFY, done for you, coaching or consulting model. Full stop. Uh, so there is a skill that you have. Kirk, I know there's a valuable skill and there are people that want to learn that skill or have you use that skill for them. And if you do that, they will pay you. That's it. And I don't know what it is, but you're going to probably tell me hopefully uh, below uh, what you're thinking. But like that is by far the fastest, best business model. Anyone that I've ever suggested anything to when they're like, what should I do? I was like, well, what do you do now? What, like, what do you do in your present day job that you could do on the side? What do you do for fun that you know a ton about that other people want to learn? There's um, there's something for everyone. Katarina, what's the best way to promote a B2B consulting business through digital marketing? I find B2B to be trickier than B2C. Interesting. Yeah, I don't find it trickier. If anything, I find it easier, but that might just be the mindset. Um, because like B2C, the reason I find that one, I don't want to say trickier, they're different, but like possibly trickier is because you're typically dealing with like mass audiences of people. You better be dialed in on what is going to appeal to the largest number of people possible in order to uh, be ROI positive on your campaign. B2B, your profit margins are typically much higher. You're charging a higher rate. You're going after fewer clients. You're able to do unscalable activities like networking and outreach and personal communication. All of these things that you literally just can't do with B2C. So the best way to promote B2B consulting through digital marketing, you need to make a power list of like your top 100 potential clients and then you need to start doing unscalable activities for them. Probably less digital marketing and more like old school networking, connection, reaching out, forming relationships, all that stuff. That's the secret. Ah, oh, Diana. Adam, how are you? I'm doing great, Diana. How are you? Finally got my first client. Thank you for all your help. Can't thank you enough. Oh, well, you just thanked me enough. That's amazing. That's I, I used to have like celebratory air horns here. Now I can't find them, but that would be the one. Or fireworks. Good for you, Diana. That's amazing. I'm really proud of you. Um, you've been showing up for weeks. Take an action. You deserve this. So good for you. When do you know when to scale ad sets after one week of them performing with a positive ROAS? Okay, so if you've got ads, they've been running for a week and they're positive ROAS, I'd be looking at the how positive ROAS. Like are they one to 1 1.2? So you're putting in a dollar and you're getting out a buck 20 or you're putting in a dollar and getting out five. If that's the case, I'd scale them up. 
And the reason is, is because that return on ad spend or return on investment, uh, that's going to go down as you scale them up inevitably. So the more you spend, the lower it's going to go. All things, it's the Latin phrase, ceteris paribus, all else equal, all everything else equal. So you're going to need more creative and more ads and more, all of that stuff. Um, but if you're getting like, say one to three return on ad spend, you can scale it up cautiously. If it's one to five, yeah, you can scale it up a lot quicker. Uh, anything less than that. And you've got some work to do to make sure that it's more positive before I dumped more money into it. Latricia, good morning from East Texas. Good morning, Latricia. So good to see you. So good to see you here. ATS Media, hello, Adam. I have a question. In the beginning, is it better to hire an appointment setter for my agency or do it myself? Probably do it yourself. Um, mostly because you're going to want the experience and you're also going to want to save on the costs a little bit. Mostly for the experience. Um, so you know what to do and uh, and like what questions to ask. Also, you may not need an appointment setter. Like how many leads are you really getting where this is a thing, right? Like are you getting... 50 leads a day that are turning into 10 sales calls because then you probably need a setter and you need one now. But if you're getting like three leads a day or five leads a day or five calls a day, yeah, you don't need a setter. Like just do it. Um, you probably don't even need a setter at all. Like you could just do a one call close or maybe a two call close if that's more your thing. Bizarre New Yorker. I miss seeing you after a move I had to make a couple of your shows. Oh, well, I'm glad you're back, my friend. Whereabouts in New York are you? I got to get back there at some point. It's been forever since I've been to New York. Lando, have the fires in Canada impacted you? I know two days ago there was smoke everywhere in Pennsylvania. I Could, uh, couldn't even see two blocks away from my house. Yeah, it's funny actually, which funny is a horrible word. It's, um, it's crazy actually how I think the place that's being impacted most is New York City right now and it's from the fires in Southern Ontario. So I'm in um, British Columbia, far West Coast, but there are fires here as well, bad fires. There's some on the island, which sucks, and there's even more in the interior, and there's some in Alberta, which is where we're heading in a couple of weeks. So we're going to go through the Canadian Rockies, long live the Rockies. Um, I'm not sure that's a saying. Let's make it a saying. So they've not impacted me yet. There's a couple nights we've had to like, we can't sleep with the window open because it's a bit smoky outside. So it's not pleasant, but... Um, I think Casey Neistat actually just made a video on like the worst air quality in the world in New York. I haven't watched it yet, but I could only imagine he's going to reference some fire smoke stuff as well. Kaboo, you hella random. Adam, grand rising, my guy. Grand rising. I don't know what that expression means, but I like it. So to you too, to you too. And let me know what that means. I'll Google it after. Actually, let's Google it now. We'll all learn together. Grand rising. Good morning. Oh, I like it. In place of good morning, because morning sounds the same as morning, which sounds like someone has passed away. Grand rising. That's a great saying. I like it. I might have to start adopting that. Rana Muhammad Usama. Hey, Adam. Happy Saturday. I'm starting an agency who helps coaches and consultants with paid ads. What should I focus on more to get first clients? Cold DMs or content creation? Um, you want to do them both at the same time. And the reason is cold DMs are going to be faster, but less effective. Content creation is going to take longer, but be more effective. Enough said. Francisco Matamoros. Hello, Adam. Happy Saturday. Could you give me any tips to market an architecture firm located in Tegucigalpa, Honduras? Tegucigalpa. That's a wicked name. What is that is planning to tailor to Airbnb owners about renovating their properties? Okay. So. Hang on. Tegucigalpa. We need to do some research. Tegucigalpa population. Oh, it's huge. 1.158 million people in 2013. And that's old, right? That's the latest stat I've got. So, man, it's funny. I love, um, I love geography and the world and history. It's so incredible to me because I've never heard of Tegucigalpa ever. Ever. And I, I'd like to consider myself a fairly well-traveled person with um, with a rel very open mind. But like that shows you how many markets there are out there and that, that not only do we not know about, but we haven't tapped into. So very exciting. Here's what you do. You have, I think, a large enough population base. I'm only going to assume there's some decent amounts of Airbnb tourism probably being a, a solid industry there. So if you're going to market to Airbnb owners, you've got to get a list of Airbnbs 
in the area, which is probably going to be very simple. Like you're going to probably be able to do this yourself manually by going to Airbnb and searching and starting to make a database. Again, that advice that I gave to, I can't remember, but it was creating a power list for B2B marketing. You're going to want to do that with like Airbnb properties. So make a power list, start reaching out, start putting together a, um, a creative offer on, Hey, this is how much you're making now. You could be making this with these kind of renovations. Hey, what if you could increase your profit margins by 20% or da, 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 da. Best advice I can offer is that the main reason that an Airbnb owner is going to want to renovate is cash, money, dollars, dinero, pesos. What's the currency in Honduras? Honduras currency. It is the Limpira. So Limpiras, that's all they care about, man. Limpiras, how they can take 20 limpiras and make it 30 limpiras. So um, go with that angle. That was fun. I like that one. Diana, if the client is looking for female clients, should I test broad targeting and then also specific to females at the ad set level? Yes, definitely. Um, so normally I leave it broad, but if you're clearly going after just females, then it makes no sense at all to include males in that targeting. So yes, keep it broad, but target females. Okay, 60 people watching right now. And, and uh, thousands, thousands, millions, billions more on the replay. So uh, hit, the, um, hit the thumbs up button if you would be so kind. I'm going to take a sip and we're going to keep rocking and rolling. All right. Villar Duen Leconte. Uh, Villar. Oh, man. Hopefully I pronounced that. Villar Duen? Villar Duen? Leconte? Leconte? I'm going to butcher that pronunciation. I apologize. Good morning, though, to you, my friend. What is your top 10 tools used to run your agency, email marketing, CRM, website, etc.? cetera? Um, I'm going to just give you one. And, and the reason is, is because there are so many, then they're all pretty good, but there's only one that I really need for my agency, which is uh, high level. So if you go to high level guide, you get a free trial and a free course and a free call. You get just a whole smattering of things because they're amazing people. I really genuinely like them. This is what I've used for all of my agencies since they very first started. I've used other tools as well. Um, like email, I'll use uh, ConvertKit occasionally, uh, website, whatever, WordPress, that you can do that through high level. Um, SMS, I do through high level. Uh, CRM, through high level. What else? I guess planning, that's something that I don't do in high level is like uh, I use Notion for that and I also store all of my files in Google Drive. So there you go. Between Google Drive and high level, I think we're pretty good. David, as a new store on Shopify, not yet launched, would it be a good idea to hire an agency to plan and create an executed marketing strategy? The answer is maybe. Depends on the agency. Um, I've talked about this a lot in the past. My preference would be to find, instead of an agency, a person a consultant to help you do that. Not me, because um, I'm not available to do that, but someone else that is probably going to be awesome also. And um, and do some due diligence, find out other people that have been good with it, but do that. Also go through this, because this is going to be a small price to pay. I think this is 300 bucks for the course. Uh, and pay specific attention to the marketing master plan section. It's a bonus course that's in there, because that's going to walk you through how to make your own marketing strategy. Then... You can take that and you can go to a marketing agency and you'll be like, look, this is what I've identified. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have other insights that you would like to share? Because um, this course, wherever it is, that's going to cost you, say, 300 bucks and an agency is going to cost you thousands. So you're going to, and if you don't know what you're doing, the agency is going to cost you tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands in lost revenue and bad marketing. I wish it wasn't so. Hey, Renee. Whoa, hang on, Renee. Sorry. Resizing you all over the place. There you go. Good to see you. Okay. Diana is creating three ad sets, 25 bucks a day, three different sets of copy, but with three image variations. I assume you're asking if that's a good thing. I think that's fine. Your results may vary, but yes, I like three ad sets, 25 bucks a day. Bizarre New Yorker, I'm trying to market a digital newsletter. Any advice? Yeah, it's going to depend where you're getting your people from. That's the most important thing is obviously subscribers. So you've got to find where your audience is present and active online. You've got to go there and you have to put together a compelling or enticing lead magnet or offer or something to get them into it. For example, this is mine. Obviously, don't take it exactly for 
copyright ethical legal reasons um but use it to model off after like what's your own take on it what's another hook or angle or something that you could provide that's going to encourage someone to sign up for your email newsletter okay Katarina Mitzi, do you think a master's in marketing is worth it since it seems like anyone can get into the sector without education? Uh, if your goal is to do marketing for your own business, for other people's businesses as an agency, I do not think a master's in marketing is worth it at all. Like not even a little. Um, for a million reasons. Two reasons. Uh, number one is it's going to cost you time. Uh, which is the biggest factor. Like if you already have a degree and then you go get a master's, it's like an extra two years to do it. No one cares, like at all. No one cares. Um, so you're you're basically paying for an uh, accreditation. Is that the word? That no one cares about. So that kind of sucks. You're paying for money um, because it's going to cost you 30 grand, 100 grand, 200 grand, depending on where you go. That's crazy. And like everything you're going to be able to learn, you can do on your own through this YouTube channel, through books, other YouTube channels, courses, etc. So no, master's is not worth it. In my opinion, I don't even think a degree in marketing is worth it. And that's from someone that has a degree in marketing. So if my kids wanted to get into marketing, obviously they have an unfair advantage. I don't, they don't want to get into marketing and they're young, but if they did, I wouldn't send them to school to do it. We might do year one because they're, they're going to learn economics, micro and macro and finance and accounting and all these other valuable skills that are going to be helpful. But the marketing was going to be self-taught. How about guff? Hey, hey, Felipe from Chile. Hola, Felipe. Como esta usted? Any advice for a small starting legal firm B2B in terms of branding and tech tools for marketing? Much love from Santiago. Come visit South America. Hey, you know it, actually. Um, Felipe, I got to get to South America. I want to go to Chile and Argentina in uh, Patagonia. So it's on my list. Um, I got to do the math, though, because it's really far. Like, flight time. Vancouver, flight time. Vancouver to Santiago is 15 hours and 15 minutes. You do that with four kids. Let me know how that trip goes. So um, any advice for small starting legal firm, branding and tech tools? So tech tools, yes. I keep talking about this a lot. Where is it again? This is your tech tool. So definitely do this or look into it. Do it do it if you want. You, you do you, my friend. But, um, but that's what I would use. Branding. The branding is going to matter less than you think. Uh, what's going to matter is probably a, a small level of consistency, but don't spend a lot of time on it. Man, I wish I could remember which video this was in, but I just, it might be like five marketing mistakes or 10 marketing mistakes or there, I don't know. There's like only three videos with that title. So if you go watch those, it's going to talk about like how to get a brand like that. And I cannot remember the website to save my life off the top of my head, but it's going to show you what that is. And it'll give you a logo. It'll give you branding. It'll do it all in like 20 minutes. And then stop it and get to work. That's it. Like, cause no one's going to really care. Okay. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Um, Mohid Irfan, good to see you again. I recognize the name. Can you please tell me that doing Google arbitration is good for buying website traffic or to run Facebook ads in the same budget? Which one is more beneficial? Great question. The answer, like all things, it depends. Is there search traffic? So Where's my, um, looking around for paper. I got this. I wonder if this is going to work. Ah, we're just going to visualize. It's going to be too hard. Visualize two circles. One over there, one over there. Venn diagram style. In this side of the circle, we have discovery traffic. Discovery traffic is Facebook and Instagram and social media. All of the things where someone goes to without clear purchase intent in mind. They just show up and they're like, hey, what's up? I'm looking at pictures today. They don't have a credit card. They're not ready to buy. They're not trying to solve a problem. Anything that we need to sell that someone's not actively searching for, we use discovery. Over here, we have search. Search is anything that someone is actively looking for a solution to. New roof for my house. Fix my plumbing. Um, weight loss solutions for men in their 60s. Uh, like anything that someone's actively searching for, we put over here. If they're actively searching for it, we use Google. If they're not, we use Facebook. Full stop. Test them both. See which one applies. You can definitely run them against each other. That's why there's a Venn diagram. There's this overlap in the middle where there are going to be businesses that can benefit from both search and discovery, but you're going to find very quickly that one of them is going to be more heavily weighted than the other. 
Who dig in Mark, dig in Mark. That's cool. We got a shovel and a highlighter. Hello everyone about subscribers. Is it true that they matter less on YouTube now? The answer is yes, it does matter less. The reason is it's mattered less for years actually, but the reason is, is because it's all about watch time. That's it. If you can get someone to come to your channel and watch your videos and they watch lots of your videos, the next time they come onto YouTube, they're going to see your videos. If they subscribe and they never watch your videos, they're not going to see any of your videos. Almost no one ever goes to their like subscribed tab on YouTube. I use subscribes to basically support channels that I believe in because I'm like, this is sweet. I think this is good stuff and I hit subscribe. But whether YouTube actively shows me that stuff or not, that's another story. In fact, between you and me, this is actually important. This is going to help me and it's going to help you. I have a list, pen and paper and also in uh, Notion, of the top YouTube channels that I want to watch regularly because I think their stuff is on fire. Like I think it's good. And I know that the YouTube algorithm may or may not show me their stuff. So I make a conscious decision to go look through their channels to look for the latest videos and to watch old ones as well, knowing full well that just because I'm subscribed, I'm probably not going to see their stuff. So if you do that, that's my recommendation, put obviously put this channel on so we can talk together more, but like put other channels on there as well, maybe five that you want to go back and watch regularly and then make sure that you actively check on their channels. Okay, Matty GB, I've been reading your emails lately and have spent most time recently looking at 8020 principle and its weight. Very interesting. Mind-blowingly interesting, Matty. Mind-blowingly. It's um the 8020 principle is one of those things that once you see it, you can't unsee it. And it's going to change the entire trajectory of your life in the best way possible. Man, that sounds like I'm just overselling the crap out of it. But it's like, I cannot begin to tell you how profound and important that principle is. Like of all the things that have made me successful, that principle might be at the forefront of it. Like like the, the literal epitome of of success. Like if you want to be successful, study and master the 80-20 principle. So let's let's go into that real quick for anybody watching. 80-20 principle is basically, it's called Pareto's principle, um, established by an Italian economist named Vilfredo Pareto, who discovered that 80% of the land in Italy was owned by 20% of the people. And then he started to realize this happened everywhere. 80% of his garden produced only 20, pardon me, 20% of his garden produced 80% of the um, plants. 20% uh, of the roads had 80% of the traffic. The flip side was also true. 80% of the roads only had 20% of the traffic. And you start to see this everywhere. Now, is it always 80-20? No. Sometimes it's 90-10. Rarely it's 70-30. Um, but you can take this and just take it to extremes. So for example, oh, let's test my math. Like you could take 80-20 and then you could 80-20 the 80-20. And now you get like 96-4, I think. Don't quote me, but it's like 4% of your actions are responsible for 96% of your results. And once you start to see this, you get crazy about what you're doing. It becomes incredibly efficient, hyper-focused. You realize that you can work less time and make 80% more money. Like life gets better. From Nepal. Hey, Nepal. Another place I got to get to. One day. One day. Renee. All right. Business is blowing up because my whole day with you playing in the background. It's funny. That's first of all, that's awesome to hear. Second of all, there's something incredibly powerful about immersion. Like if you just immerse yourself with in the world and um, in the people that live, breathe, eat, sleep, the thing that you want to learn, like it's inevitable. It's going to seep in. You can't keep it out forever. It's almost like brainwashing in the most positive sense. I'm offering a funnel hub concept to B2B and would like your best tips for a LinkedIn strategy. What should I do first? LinkedIn is tough. Uh, I think your best plan with a LinkedIn strategy is a combination of content and engagement, less so DMs and outreach, mostly because the people that you want to DM and outreach to, they're just, they ignore them all because it's, um, it's a bit of a swamp in the DM pool there. So you're going to need to create a lot of content. You're also going to need to make, again, a power list of your top people, and you're going to want to comment and engage with their stuff as much as possible. Once you've done that, feel free to send a simple message that asks for nothing. Hey, saw your post. Just wanted to make a quick connection. Really love what you had to say about, duh, totally agree. Think it's great. That's it. And then nurture those relationships. Okay, Maurice, thanks for answering. I deleted the first comment because I thought I could spell it better. Seems like it wasn't deleted in your system. Yeah, that's all right. It's funny. The software that I use, I think, takes them directly and like brings it over so I can actually share it on the screen earlier. 
that's why occasionally someone's like, you missed my question. It might not have got passed through. In fact, was it Dante? He's like, I hope I get my question answered. And then he didn't ask a question. Dante, if you're there, you have your chance or you had your chance. We're running out of, we're not running out of time, but like, we're, we're, we're filling up. Okay, Diana, P1, does this testing strategy work? Three ad sets, 25 bucks a day. First ad set, three different images, but same copy. Second ad set, three other images, new copy. Third ad set. Yeah. Yes, I do it in order though. So what I would do is uh, I wouldn't run them all at the same time, but here, actually, let me, let me get rid of your um, question. Let me walk you through my testing strategy 90% of the time. One campaign, three different ad sets, same ad copy. In all of them, I spend as much time as I can making what I believe is the best piece of ad copy, all the words, best I can. Same one in every ad set, three different images or three different videos, whatever. Not one image, two videos, not two images, one video, like three images or three videos because I like consistency. I don't want to put an image against a video or whatever it is. And what I'm looking for is which image works best. Once I have that image and I've got a winner, then I go that image, new ad set, get rid of the old one, unless it's working really well, then I'll leave it on, but I'll duplicate it out, build a new one, three different versions of the copy, same image. Then I'll get that. I'll find the new best copy. I'll take that. I'll duplicate it again. Three new images against that copy. And it never, ever ends ever. Oh, fit ship world. How can I prepare conversion tracking in Facebook ads? You get the uh, Facebook pixel, you install it on your website, you go to custom conversions, you go through the system that it sets you up. That's it. I can't really tell you without showing you all the buttons to push on the screen. So um, it's a bit of an annoyance, but once you've done it once, you'll, it's like riding a bike. Mike Tabiesti. Tabiesti? Tabiesti? Mike. Good morning, Adam. Morning, Mike. I want to offer. Message marketing, reputation management, and lead gen for local businesses. I'm looking into some CRMs for automation. Do you have any workflow suggestions? Oh man, I feel like this video is not sponsored, Mike, and everybody else listening. But again, do this. Uh, and the reason is, is because it has ba uh, baked in reputation management inside it as well. So like if you're, if you're looking for like automation and, um, and like local lead gen and all of that, like this is literally, there's a lot of businesses I think should use it. This is one where you just have to, uh, I don't know anything that even comes close to doing the things that you want to do. So that's it. Search over John. Hey, Adam is Mad Men your favorite TV show. And if not, why is it breaking bad? Okay. So fun story. Mad Men is not my favorite TV show. In fact, I got bored really quick of it. I know. I tried to watch it and I made it like, I don't know, six, seven episodes in. I was like, I should like this. I just didn't, I, I don't know. I didn't really care for it. Um, so I stopped watching it and then I tried to rewatch it again later, like two years later. I was like, let's try again. Maybe now it's my favorite. Oh, I got bored after like the second episode. So no, not my favorite one. Breaking Bad, also not my favorite episode. So here's a little known fact about me. I don't like um, too much negativity, horror, scary, crime stuff. Uh, like, I just don't super enjoy it. Like, I don't mind like a bit of a mystery. I don't mind a thriller. I don't mind like when good things happen. But like Breaking Bad, the whole premise is, is relatively morbid. I don't mind like morbid, dark humor. But like when it's real, oh, I just, I don't know. I just never really feel good. So I watched like a season of Breaking Bad and, um, and that was enough for me. Other people love it. And I think they're uh, some of my best friends think it's the best show ever. And I'm like, awesome. But ain't for me. P2 and third ad set, three other images, new copy. Yeah, I think we... I think we talked about that. How long do you wait before you turn off scale ads? Um, if they're being bad after a few days, I'll turn them off. And if they're scaling, if they're profitable to a three or five ROAS or ROI, I scale them up. Rana, can you tell me about attractive marketing? What type of content should be best? Focus on getting clients. Is it about my service on the part why they need it? There's a lot of questions in here, Rana. So first of all, I'm not sure what you mean by attractive marketing. So we're going to gloss over that one. What type of content would be best to focus on getting clients? I've got videos on this. So I'm going to send you on like how to get clients and things like that. If you look for that, that's going to hopefully answer that. Is it about my service and the part why they need it? That one I'm going to answer clearly. And the answer is probably no. Odd answer, right? Here's why. We never want to tell people why they need our stuff. Because then we have a very long uphill battle 
where we're dealing with people at the very far end of the spectrum that are the least likely to buy from us. Um, Eugene Schwartz calls this the five levels of awareness. There's some advanced copywriting stuff for you here this morning, but like they're unaware. They don't really know they have a problem. They don't really care. Like we don't want to sell to them. That's terrible. That's a disaster. We want to sell to the people who are like, I have a problem. I need this solution. I'm looking for the best possible person to deliver this solution. Now you can start marketing. You can start using differentiation. You can position yourself. You can do competitor research. You can find gaps in the market that allow you to deliver your unique value in your unique way, et cetera. What should I learn after fundamentals in Facebook ads? Um, so I'm of the belief that you can never really master the fundamentals. Like they should become second nature. So probably more. What should you learn after fundamentals in Facebook ads? Copywriting, probably, especially if you want to focus on Facebook ads in general, like the copy is going to be the most important part of your ad. Okay. Thumbs up break. Hit smash tap water break. All right. Let's see. Ashwin, hello, Adam. I'm from India. Hello, Ashwin. I want to start a digital marketing agency. Which niche is better? What should be better in future proof? Uh, depends what you mean by future proof. Things things be changing. Um, which niche is better? So it's cool. Every time I go to like, I watch these from time to time because I'm curious what other people think and have to say on it. But it's like, this is the best niche for marketing. Here's why none of that is true. First of all, every niche is a potential million dollar niche everyone like i don't know maybe some obscure random thing no one's ever heard of maybe not but like the big ones all of them are million multi-million dollar niches all of them full stop so which one is best it's whichever one you're most interested in can get the best results for which kind of client can you serve best etc um which one is future proof basically things that aren't going away anytime soon so luxury goods are always good um Commodities are also always good. People need the same kind of things over and over. Home services, kind of always good. Plumbing, HVAC, roofing, landscaping. I like those. Solar, uh, pools, pool cleaning. Like if I had to pick one, I'd probably go from one of those six. Um, also, again, holy moly, this isn't sponsored. <laughs> I feel silly now. I should just leave this thing up. I'll just leave it in the corner. Um, but like go here, sign up for the free trial. And if you go into snapshots, you can see all of the different marketing campaigns that they have built out for some of the most popular niches. And then you can just like literally copy and paste it into your account. So you'll also see things like chiropractors and dentists and things like that. I don't like doing chiropractor or dentist marketing because it's too competitive. Uh, so it just means that I'm not able to get as good of results for clients on it. I like lesser known ones. All right, Naveen. I'm from Malaysia. I'm 17. Good for you. I'm planning on starting a digital marketing agency next month. Any tips or ideas to follow? You betcha. I've got videos on that topic. So go to Adam or just go to YouTube type Adam Earhart marketing agency. And you're going to find like three, four or five videos to take you, I don't know, one hour to watch them all. I'm going to tell you more in those than I could with like five hours to sit down. Uh, Naveen, is it okay to give more than one marketing service? Yes, you do have to be careful how diverse, how diverse you spread your services, but yes, you can absolutely do more than one service. I do like niching down. This kind of stems back to like one of the first questions we answered here. It's like, should I niche? Should I offer all things? I think you should offer all things to start because you need the money and not just offer everything, but like find the people that need help. And they're like, we need Facebook ads. You're like, I do Facebook ads. We need email marketing. I do email marketing. What a what a weird coincidence. Then over time, you're going to figure out where you're getting the best results for your clients and you're going to do more of that and less of the other stuff until the point comes where you're getting all the best results here. Then you're going to do none of the other stuff. Um, in fact, that's where I made my quote unquote millions was I offered all of the things through my progression. Then I started to get really, really good at Facebook ads. So I stopped doing all of the other things. And then I made myself a reputation in the field as like a Facebook ads guy and I just got great results. So lots of referrals, lots of money and profit share and revenue share and all of that. So that blew up the business. Then I got tired of it. And I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, so I stopped doing clients and started doing more content. But again, we'll talk about that years later. Maritz, glad I can make it again. I have to leave now. Have a great day. Hey, Maritz. Adios, my friend. Have a great day. Exactly. Oh, Grand Rising. Good. Good man. I like it. Grand Rising. 
Kang, hey Adam, my question is recently I found a course about working with ChatGPT, but I think ChatGPT is a assessing program for your specialist. You can't do a service for something basically you don't know. I'm not sure I understand, my friend. Course about working with ChatGPT is assessing program for your specialist. Okay, I don't follow, but um, we'll see if we can clarify that. Hey, Lon. Hey, my man. Good to see you. What's up? A little late today. That's all right. I'm glad you could make it. Nonetheless, it is good to see you here. Good to see you. I was starting to wonder. I was like, where's Elon? What's going on? Katarina, I want to work in a CRM position, but how do I get into it? CRM software experience is needed, but that's not something you can learn on your own or university. Why not? Why not? I'm going to push back. You could totally learn CRM on your own. In fact, you can't see my screen right now, but I'm going to YouTube. I'm going to type in um, how to learn CRM. Do, 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 do. What is CRM? Introduction to CRM. There's video one. Number two, Salesforce CRM, full training. It is 40 minutes long. Video number three, what is CRM and how does it work? That is only two minutes. Next, what is CRM? 25 minutes. Next, uh, what is CRM? A guide to CRM software by Zoho. So yeah, you can learn CRM. Plus CRM, um, there's going to be software specific. So pick the software that you want to focus on, learn that, then go find the businesses that use it. If you're going big business, it's going to be Salesforce, HubSpot, probably those. Um, if you're going smaller business, medium-sized business, agencies, it's going to be high level, will probably be the best one for you. So yeah, you can learn it. Uh, Mladen, Mladenov, would you suggest video or static creative for Facebook ads according to the latest meta updates? Uh, are you really good at making videos? Then make videos. If you're not really good at making videos, use static images. That's my advice to everybody. In fact, normally I suggest static images because it introduces less variables into the equation. And uh, when you start doing video and the, the ad doesn't perform, you're like, is it the copy? Is it the targeting? Is it the video? Is it the text? Is it the headline? There's just too many moving parts. So yeah, start with images. French smooth. Hey, Rick, I want a party rental company in Jamaica called Rick's Party Rental. I also want to attempt to get a 360 photo booth into a hotel for weddings. I think that's sweet. I saw this, um, oh, I forget what it's called. There's this service in a few different cities, countries now. I think it's called like Mono Booth or something. But it's basically a way to like, to go in and like take selfies on, um, like the full, the thing is fully set up. I think it's super cool. Uh, we don't have one of those here. But yeah, I think a 360 photo booth is cool. I think you could also probably get away depending on what the demands are and what people want. But like simple backdrops and Instagram frames or whatever it is, like, yeah, there's lots of ways to be creative without spending a fortune on it. <coughs> I think it's cool though. Good for you. Mufungulwa Kawana. Hey, Adam. It's the audio advertising on public transport guy. Hey, my friend. I remember. Always great to see you and you as well. What's the best way to measure? Is there some app that I can use to measure how many times my ad play in a day? The When you're doing audio advertising, the place that you're advertising on should tell you. That's it. They're going to tell you how many times your ad is playing. Um, that's it. They'll give you the stats. Then what I use is I use a special tracking link. So I'll send them to a special website. I'll be like, don't forget to visit adamsaudioadvertising.com. And it's going to be just for the sole purpose of tracking my audio ads. Ideally, it's something easy to remember, not adamsaudioadvertising.com. And I'm going to make them some kind of offer as well. So I can actually encourage them to take action. Whew. Okay. We're rocking. We're rolling. Seven minutes, then it's time for pancakes. Ricky, I'm a fitness apparel startup. Love your content. Any tips to boost up the sales? So many, Ricky. I'm going to have to send you to the videos, my friend, I think, because there's so many that I need to know the specifics on it. Because like, otherwise, I'm going to be clarify your message and offer this and do this thing and try Instagram and like really generic things that aren't going to help you at all. So I'm going to send you to the videos. Mladen, Mladenov, do you think a stack adapt is a good marketing tool for a service B2C company? I have not used it. I cannot comment. Let's see. Exafi Hamid, we're going to have to have a chat about asking too many questions of the same thing, copying, pasting. Can't be having that. So we're going to skip that one as a lesson. Dig and Mark, hello, Adam. I would like to know if we don't have much to show in our portfolio as we have just started, is it fair to use the marketing or content created for our own business as part of it? Doo -doo -doo. Yes. The answer is yes. 
Um, like if you're just getting started and you don't have client stuff to show, yeah, you can absolutely do your own stuff and show it. You're like, here's the campaign that we launched. Here's what we did. Here's some of the creative. Here's a video we made. Here's this. The other thing you can do is you can create hypothetical made up stuff or I shouldn't say made up stuff, hypothetical campaigns for made up businesses, for real businesses. You can offer to do marketing for other businesses with the sole purpose of building up your portfolio. Lots of options, lots of options. Okay, Taylor, uh, who have you studied from or worked for with to gain your marketing knowledge? So, full disclosure, I do have a marketing degree, but that is not where I learned marketing at all, not even close. Where I learned marketing was self-taught, mostly, um, through books, through podcasts, through audiobooks. Uh, who have I learned from? Like, hang on one second, I'm going to move some of this stuff. Like so many people. So many people. It's almost impossible to name all of the people that I've learned from uh, because there have been so many different influences. That said, Seth Godin, phenomenal, re like phenomenal mentor, resource, probably one of the best. He's definitely shaped and influenced the way that I look at marketing. So Seth Godin, number one, read everything he's written. It's awesome stuff. Uh, Jay Abraham, a lot on like value and service businesses and providing, uh, working with clients, charging higher rates. Dan Kennedy, the father of direct response marketing, like, um, actually, he's probably not the father of direct response. It might be Ogilvy going back more, but like Dan Kennedy, phenomenal stuff, like really, really good on that. Um, obviously then the masters, Ogilvy, Eugene Schwartz, Robert Collier, um, Gary Halbert, like, like old school copywriters. So, um, who's more recent and current? Perry Marshall, 8020 sales and marketing, phenomenal. Like there's, there's tons. There's so many good ones. So all of them. Habiba, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, thank you. My question is, how do you know you have mastered SEO to offer it as a service? Have you taken a website and ranked it? If so, you have the skills necessary to go do this for other people. Um, that's it. Can you get people results? Then you're good enough to get them results. That's it. I don't know if you need to like master it. You don't need like first paid or pardon me, top number one every time. You need to be able to get results. That's That's what matters. That's the only thing that matters. Take a step back. When we're looking at marketing, the only thing that matters is results. Not self-confidence, not how many books you've read, not how you feel, none of that. Garbage. Um, the only thing that matters is are you able to do the thing that you said you're going to do or that someone is paying you to do? Rank a website, build, um, build a website, run a social media ad campaign, get results with the social media ad campaign, create content, get people to view the content. Like, that's it. Gallo, whoops, hang on. Gallo, buenos dias from June, gloomy Southern California. Buenos dias. Are you self-taught on Go High Level, my new fave? And did you use it to build simple website when you started? So the answer is yes, self-taught, yes, but. Um, self-taught only because I've been using it for so long that when it first came out, there wasn't very many resources. So it's like it got launched as like a beta. It was available only to marketing agencies I signed up because I was like, this thing looks like it's going to be wicked. It had a ton of bugs and issues. We worked through them with the, uh, the founders at the time. Now it's amazing. Um, but yeah, self-taught, I guess. Now they have courses. So this one that is free. Okay. Doo -doo -doo -doo. This is a good question. Istiak, two to three best cold emails you have ever received. What was his approach uh, or her approach? So the best one ever was like, the best ones are always the ones that provide a lot of value and proof and they do it quickly. Um, so the best cold emails have always been, Hey Adam, I've got something here for you. Totally free. Don't expect anything back in return. Here it is. And it's, uh, here's a free website. Here's free thumbnails. Here's free editing, whatever it is. But that's not enough because to me, my time is more valuable than my money. So free doesn't, I don't really care about free, but it removes the risk of like, I'm not willing to take a chance on someone and give them a whole bunch of money when I'm like, who are you? What have you done? So that's step one. Number two is some kind of proof. We've done work for A, B, C, X, Y, Z people. There's links, there's whatever it is. They show proof that they know what they're doing and probably a link to their website or portfolio, which is amazing. So when they're like, Adam, we're going to build you a free website. I go to their website and it's beautiful. Like it's, it's exactly what I want. Adam, we're going to edit your videos. They go to um, their portfolio page and they're very, very good video edits. So that's actually how I hired some of my editors. Like really, really good. And then number three is like, look, I know you're busy. 
happy to do this for free. Just send this or that, or look, I already started, or here's this thing or whatever it is. And then the product that they deliver back is mind blowing. That's it. That's it. Is it hard? Yeah. Crazy hard. I like that's hard to do, but very good. That's how I hired the person that built my website. That's how I hired the person that does um, most of my video editing now. Um, they were all cold emails. That's how I hired the person that actually is doing some thumbnail split testing as well. Those were the emails. You know what I don't respond to? Hey, Adam, you free for 15 minutes to have a chat about how we can double your business revenue? Delete, block, spam. Oh, crazy. <clears throat> okay. Tony. Hey, Adam. Tony from Egypt. Hey, Tony. I used to live in Egypt, in uh, Cairo, in... Um, <laughs> where was it? Oh, man. I can't even remember the neighborhood. It's been years. Not Mahdi, but in um, out on Ring Road by the J-Dub Marriott there. Um, oh, I'm blanking on it. doesn't matter. I have a client working Christian books. Any advice to make better marketing? He's on a budget. Oh, Tony, I'm going to send you to the videos too because there's so much that I don't have time to get into it there. Okay, let's see if we can get a couple more questions or one more if I can find. I have a degree in marketing as well. I agree with you 100%. About 80% of the things I learned are obsolete now. Definitely not a good ROI. No, not at all. Crazy, right? And Jesse, you're right. Yeah, it's true for a lot of degrees. Ah, yep, indeed. Okay, let me see. I'm going to find one more that I think can help the most number of people and we're going to wrap it. da 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 so let's see. Question you recommend advertising. Let's see. Lots of questions. Do you have any words from more loan? This one's very simple, so I'm just gonna answer this. Uh, this is my advice again. Not sponsored. Ridiculous. This stream has been dedicated to high level, but um let's see. Oh man. Trying to find one that I think there's some specifics. Okay, let's go with this one because I think this is relevant to anybody that is working with a smaller budget. What do you recommend for a client who's starting out as a coach with a minimum budget? They can't afford click funnels since they're just starting. So, two thoughts. Number one, there is no shame in just starting and not having a budget. No shame. That, that was me when I first started. I had nothing. But... There is a point where if there's a tool for the job that you're going to need, you do need to just go get it. Now, we don't need ClickFunnels, which I think is 100 bucks a month. There's other options. There's lead pages, which I think you can get the beginning version for 30 bucks a month. Um, there's ConvertKit, which has, say, 30 bucks a month also, and you get a landing page builder and email marketing. There's other things like that as well. So we do need that. Like We do probably need some kind of a website, landing page, whatever place to go to send people. We need a domain. That's 10 bucks a year. We need hosting or we can use a landing page um, and we need some kind of email service. So those are kind of non-negotiables. Barring that, let's say we don't even have that. It's going to come down to content creation, like mass amounts of content. We still need to send someone somewhere. I have a video on my channel where it's like how to get a free website and free hosting. So watch that video, then do that. Get them a free website, get them free hosting um, and then content. Like you're, you're going to have to create more than you thought because we're going to compensate for our lack of money with our increase in time. Those are our two resources that we can spend to grow businesses. Time slash energy and money. That's it. It's a balance. Okay. Enough said. Pancake time. My friends, thank you for being here. Thank you for the amazing and insightful questions. Super, super valuable. If you have follow-up questions, you can ask them here in the Discord, modernmarketinghub.com. This will take you to the free Discord server where you can engage and interact with each other. Me, one of these days, occasionally when I'm like waiting in line at a coffee shop, I'm trying to hop in, trying to be more active, but I'm not even the draw of that community. You guys are. So with that said, love y'all. Thanks for being here. I'll see you in a bit.